Okay, I'm going to talk about a question that one of my impact members posted on the group the other day about how to teach children subtraction and the fact that so many children struggle with subtraction. So I'm going to release a series of videos for you and this is number one. Okay, so to begin with, the very first thing is this is not the maths. This is a representation of the maths. And just like you've seen me do this lots of times before, that is not an apple. It is the English representation of an apple using alphabetic symbols to help us communicate that. If you just look at that, you won't understand anything about apples. When you look at that, when you read that, your brain automatically imagines real apples and can engage with that. So that's what we call a concept image you have in your mind of what apples are. If I ask you then what an apple smells like or what an apple tastes like or what happens when we cut an apple up, you can tell me. So likewise, this is meaningless unless it conjures up some concept images for the learner, not just children, anybody. If you try and engage in these symbols, you will only have a memorization to rely on. And that is just using rules, tricks, facts that someone has taught you instead of understanding. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make it real. You don't have to do this every single time, but you do have to have done it enough that your children can call upon these sorts of things to make sense of something like this. So carrying on the theme of apples, this is a cooking apple if it's looking less attractive. I am going to cut this up as if it was an eating apple for a snack. Okay, let's, these aren't gonna be even bits because oops, <laughs> I'm gonna make sure there's nine only because I'm sticking to the calculation that Sika in my group gave me. So I've created oh, some good maths here. Two twos, two twos in that side. So four and a three and a two in that side. So five. OK, that's not for this calculation activity, but it's a really good example of how, what I've just done there. No counting at all. So this might be the situation at home. We've cut up the apple. First thing I need to know is, so I want you to ignore that, that doesn't exist at the moment. We're just cutting up apple for a snack. How many bits of apple do we have? Well, one of the ways we could find out, I've just done this with paper, but we can do this eventually using patterns, but basically a five frame, two five frames joined together, create a 10 frame. Do keep them separate though, and I'll show you why in a moment. I am chatting away, you can fill it up the fives first, or if your children know the twos pattern, you could do it that way. Either way, with nine, you're gonna end up like that. Now, don't forget, at the beginning, we're starting off with a scenario where we don't know how many apple pieces there are. Okay, I've taken it right back to the start. And we're gonna think about how many are there. So now I've got this, there are it's one less than a full 10 frame. So your children, in order to be doing a calculation like this, they're only ready for it when they have the fluency of understanding that this is what nine looks like, okay? Also, nine can be arranged in other ways. It's a square number, so it can be arranged. I've got nice clean hands, so I can use this afterwards. But we can arrange it in three threes. And depending on how I arrange it, because it's three that way and three that way, it is a square number. It's looking a little bit more like an oblong number at the moment. Let's space it out a bit. It's a little bit... Uh, it still doesn't look very square, does it? There we go. All right. So the properties of nine. Also, if you want to play around with this, possibly not with the apple pieces, but in nine, there are four twos and there's another one. Or you can make twos out of it, but there's an extra one. Can't all go into twos. There's loads and loads of maths there. So if we then think about a real life problem that could represent this, so this is the last stage. This is not, the, we don't start with the calculation and then say, oh, let's make it real. We need to make these scenarios real and then build up through concrete, pictorial, and then to abstract. So in the future, when your children see abstract, when that's appropriate, they can then connect back to these concrete experiences. And what I'm going to show you is a pictorial representation as well. OK, so why might let's go back to looking at this on our 10 frame because it is the easiest way to see it. Please know I'm talking. So there's no way I'm counting. 
Counting is not going to help your children because they're going to say a different number name for each of these. And the idea that the last one, imagine if I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've called that one one, that one two, that one three, that one four and so forth. We need them to understand the whole thing is nine. OK, so I've got nine. Why might I be giving five away? Because this subtract five means either we're going to partition this and move five away from it, or we're going to reduce the amount we have by five. Either way, it's not going to be nine anymore. So it might be that I want to give you five bits of apple. Maybe I've looked at this and thought, look, it's not going to divide equally unless I chop this bit in half. But you can have this portion of the apple and I'll have this portion here. So you're going to have five. Can you see already? And let's cover this up in case we're focusing on this too much. That actually, when it's like this, the idea that I'm going to give you five from my nine, you can see how many are left. And if you can't see how many are left as a child, you're not ready to do that calculation yet. If you haven't got that understanding of what nine looks like, you can also see here there's five there using what we call the twos pattern. It's a four and oops, <laughs> it's a four and one more. If I remove that, I'm left with four there. So that's four with two and two in it. That's four with two and two in it. It's both four. It just looks different. So we've got a scenario. I've got nine bits of apple. I'm going to give you five of them. How many bits of apple will I have left? All right. Now, at the moment, that is concrete, what I'm going to call concrete real world. You can see it's my apples and they're rapidly going brown. We want children to understand that when you've got nine and you subtract five, it always leaves you with four. Doesn't matter if it's apples or anything else. This, this knowledge, this fact about nine subtract five will always give you four. So let's have a look at the next important step. So that is what I'm going to call concrete real world. So now we have concrete maths world. So now we're going to look at concrete maths world. I'm just going to use the same very, very no expense spared. This is even recycled paper. There's my two five frames. So I know what nine looks like. I'm going to put it on. Remember, if you've done training with me, I suggest your children sing a little song. Doesn't matter what song or if you're an adult, be chatting like I am. So because that process will usually mean you count and that's not helpful. So here's nine and the nine represents the apple pieces. Children are very, very good at making something pretend to be something else. They're always doing this in their play. They'll say, they'll pick something up and pretend it's some food or they'll pretend to be sweeping with something that's not a brush. You know they're good at this. So now these counters represent those apple pieces. But you've taken a really important step into the world of abstract. So I'm going to call this concrete maths world. We had real world concrete or concrete real world. But the important thing to do is now represent that in a concrete way with something that can be used to represent anything. This could be nine children. It could be nine days. It could be nine of anything. So now that's the concrete version. We're looking at we've got to subtract nine. How are we going to do this? So that this now we need to take a step back to understand how a child will always use what's called conceptual subitizing, part whole, to solve subtraction. Subtraction will only cause your children problems if you are teaching subitizing separate from counting, separate from perceptual subitizing, separate from addition, separate from subtraction. These things are all connected and subtraction is basically part whole. If you remove a five from a nine, you're left with a four. Whether you remove that five, that five or any of the five, you'll be left with a four. So that's the bit we're going to take a step back and look at next, because if you have not secured your children's ability to conceptually subitize with much smaller amounts and you haven't secured their ability to perceptually subitize and recognize amounts on the 10 frame up to 10, because we never actually go above 10, our next 10 here I just make this up to a finish 10. If I was to grab my now soggy 10 frames from my apples, I do this and I've got one full 10 and one of the next 10. Look, one full 10, one of the next 10. This is still a 10 as well. 
that 11 is just one full 10 and one of the next 10. So that's some thinking for another time. But the next video will show you how you have to go back before you can go forwards. This calculation is only appropriate for children who can understand part whole and that starts with numbers to three. So that will be video two.